Hey guys, this is Thomas Wells, the body mechanic. I wanted to talk a little bit today about the rotator cuff. So that's one of the most common things that brings people into my office these days. Um, rotator cuff is a group of four muscles in the shoulder. Um, their name would suggest that rotation is the main thing that they do. Uh, it turns out that's just a small, a small bit of their function. Their main function is actually stabilizing the humeral head in the socket when doing other motions. So extremely important muscle group. Um, again, four muscles, uh, a common abbreviation people use for them is the SITS muscles, that's S-I-T-S. That stands for supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, and subscapularis. So just to show you where these muscles are real quick. So your supraspinatus, that's right on top of the shoulder here, right in this groove, the supraspinous fossa here. This is the spine of the scapula, so supraspinatus above the spine. Then we have our infraspinatus right down here. We have our teres minor right along here. And then on the underside of the scapula, so between the shoulder blade and the ribs, we have the subscapularis right there. So the, the supraspinatus does mainly abduction, so pulling the arm away from the side. Uh, the, the teres minor and infraspinatus are external rotators, so moving the arm away from the body. And the subscapularis is an internal rotator, moving the muscle in towards the body. So these are chronically injured muscles. Um, the most commonly injured is the supraspinatus, again, that, that's the one on top. Uh, when you hear about shoulder impingement, that's the muscle that people are talking about. The, the tendon and uh, the kind of the distal part of the muscle can get impinged under a bony part of the shoulder blade right there. And in order to prevent things like that, it's important to maintain good balance of the rotator cuff. So the rotator cuff uh, muscles collectively are stabilizers for the shoulder, so they're not big, heavy movers. Their job is to provide support to the shoulder while you do all your other motions. So these, these shoulders and, and or these uh, rotator cuff muscles and other stabilizers in the body in general tend to get neglected when people are doing their exercises and their workouts and whatnot. So it's important to pay them a little bit of attention. Um, they're frequently injured and they don't particularly heal very fast. They do not get a great blood supply. So it's important with these exercises, it's not just about strengthening, that, that's, a, that's a percentage of it. Also, we're just trying to bring circulation into the muscle via the exercises and that helps with healing and repair and recovery. So I wanted to show you a basic set of exercises just to kind of begin your exploration of the rotator cuff. So we can give some exercises for all four muscles, the four sits muscles. So the first one I wanted to show you, it's very simple, and this is using, this is using a TheraBand or an exercise band. So it doesn't matter whether you use the flat sheet kind or whether you use the tubular kind like I have here. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna find sort of a fixed anchor point. I'm just using my door handle right there. And you're gonna have your arm at your side like so. Now it's important when you do this that you put a little something under your elbow. I, I like to roll a little towel and put it under the elbow. And the reason for that, just by giving yourself a little bit of space, it helps improve the circulation to the rotator cuff, in this case, the subscapularis muscle, while you're doing the exercise. So for your ins and outs that you're gonna be doing with your arm at your side, you want that little bit of a spacer right there. So I'm just gonna grab something to use as a spacer here, for example. So as I'm doing the motion, you're just pulling across your body, like so. Nice and slow, you're going as wide as you can. Another cool thing about having a little spacer under the arm is that if you go too far, if you're not doing a nice clean rotation, because this should be more or less like a door moving on a hinge. So, so the whole door frame shouldn't move, just the door. So if you go too far, if you're not doing it really cleanly, then whatever you've got under there will fall out. Okay, so it's a handy little bit of uh, biofeedback there. Okay, 
So ins and outs, you're gonna do high repetition, low resistance. So then we're gonna do the opposite motion. Again, arm at the side, something under the elbow for, for uh, support and space. And you're gonna go laterally, like so. Okay, keeping the elbow into the side. Okay, so you can do it straight like this, or you can also anchor, uh, anchor the band at a lower point and come up at an angle like this. So the band would be down like this as I rotate across this way. So if I go across this way, that's gonna be a little more targeted to the teres minor muscle. If I keep my arm fixed at my side, it's gonna be more of a kind of a collective effort between the teres minor and infraspinatus muscles. And if I were to have my arm up, so maybe I had the band anchored in front of me and I was rotating up like so, like this type of motion, then that's much more targeted to the infraspinatus. Okay, so we got our inwards, we've got our outwards at various angles. You can do inward rotations at different angles too. Uh, most people do not have a particularly strong or uh, stable subscapularis, that's the internal rotator. So I don't recommend starting up high in this position. You can progress to that over time. This is a much easier position to start with. Then the last one we want to do, this is for the supraspinatus. Let me unanchor my band here. Okay, so the supraspinatus, as I was saying, kind of lifts the arm away from the side. Uh, it really does about the first 10 to, it, it's most active in about the 10 to 15, 15 degree angle, um, 10 to 15 degrees of abduction there. It works the whole way up, but it's most targeted and you get the least amount of deltoid active in that first 10 to 15 degrees. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna step on the band with one foot. You're gonna stand with a wide stance. And you can either go thumbs out or palms in. It doesn't make a huge difference. Whatever's more comfortable for you. You're gonna raise the arm out and back in like so. So it's nice and slow. It's gonna feel like nothing at first. You're not gonna feel a lot of effort. But then as you go, you're going to start to feel a little fatigue up there. You might even feel uh, some sa sensation on the outside of the arm there. That's not the muscle you're feeling. That's referred sensation from the muscle you're feeling there. Okay, so you don't want it to be painful or uncomfortable. You just go till you start to get fatigued and then you stop. And that'll serve its function of bringing circulation into those muscles and, and helping kind of maintain the tissue health in there. It's important that you do these after you do any heavy lifting, any, any heavy compound lifts that use the big, the big prime movers of the shoulder, because you don't want these things fatigued right before you ask them to do their actual job of stabilizing the shoulder. So you want, if you're gonna do, the, if you're gonna mix this with other exercises, you wanna do the bigger, heavier lifts first and finish with this kind of stuff. Or you can just do it in isolation and that's fine too. Uh, I definitely recommend that if you're grouping them together that you do the supraspinatus last um, because the abduction motion is the most sensitive to a reduction in space or uh, impingement in the shoulder there. So by doing the, the ins and outs first, your, your teres minor, uh, infraspinatus and subscapularis, by doing those first, they actually help pull the shoulder down into the socket so that when you're doing your abduction, you're not getting, you're less likely to get that pinch in there. So it doesn't really matter what order you do the first three in, but I would end with the, um, with the supraspinatus there. So this is a good thing to do a couple times a week. Takes, excuse me, takes you five minutes, uh, but it's worth doing. It really helps maintain shoulder health and uh, can make you much less likely to end up with uh, a rotator cuff tear someday, which something like 75% of people over the age of 50 uh, have or have had a rotator cuff injury. So they're very common. Um, and if you neglect those stabilizers, you know, it's something that's likely to happen. So it's very important. So hope this was useful for you and I'll see you next time.